For decades now, Gatorade has reigned king supreme over the sports drink world. But within just one year, Logan Paul and KSI launched Prime and pretty well blew them out of the water. The brand and the marketing duo behind it have made some big promises and an even bigger splash. So we thought that it was about time that we took a look at what's really going on. This video is made possible because of our Patreon supporters. Head on over there if you wanna check out some behind the scenes footage, early access to videos and exclusive content. All right, so we've actually already made a video about Gatorade and how they basically invented the sports drink industry. If you wanna check that out after we're done here, the link will be down in the description below. But Gatorade is important in this story for a couple of reasons. One is because they invented sports drinks to help athletes replace the sweat that you work out intensely when you're on the field or on the track or whatever. Gatorade might have invented this genre, but Prime is the new face in town. Now I know there's a lot of taste tests online about this beverage, and if you are interested in knowing like the specifics of the flavors and the packaging and all that other stuff, you can go and check out these videos. So this is actually the first ever time that I have held uh, a bottle of Prime. Now we are not typically a review style channel, but at the end of this video, I am going to try Prime for myself and let you know what I think of it, if you care at all. But the reason why we are talking today is because this drink has completely changed the industry and it has some pretty big ramifications. See, when Gatorade first came out, they positioned themselves as the sport beverage of champions. And it was basically synonymous with sports for the last several decades. But Prime is launched by a couple of YouTubers, basically, and granted, they have some boxing experience because they've performed in front of millions of people, but by and large, these guys aren't exactly the representatives of, like, athletes, you know? They're in good shape, but they're not, like, the athlete stereotype that sports beverages were typically associated with. And the thing is, apparently it doesn't matter anymore because demand for sports drinks has only gone up despite the number of competitive athletes staying pretty well the same. Today, the sports drink industry is worth almost $30 billion. But why is actually really interesting. See, in general, we're witnessing a wider variety of people becoming interested in what is known as functional drinks. That is, drinks that do something for you rather than just taste like pure sugar. I'm talking about things like kombucha, vitamin water, and of course, sports drinks. In particular, we're seeing people gravitate towards more healthy options. As the market expands, savvy businessmen have pounced on the opportunity to carve out their own niches within this mega lucrative industry. And this is when KSI and Logan Paul enter the story. Actually, sorry, it's not quite like that. Enter Trey Steger and Max Clemens, which I pretty much almost guarantee are two names that you have never heard before. Turns out Steger and Clemens are the real brains behind the prime brand, right? They manage the operations, they figure out how to do everything, and KSI and Logan are the front men. This is not an altogether surprising story for most people, but it is amazing that the guy who was behind the whole crypto zoo disaster was able to convince people to buy a sports drink. Steger and Clemens are owners of a company called Congo Brands, which from what we can tell, just develops influencer founded brands from the shadows. They saw the profitability of sports drinks, saw the popularity of KSI and Logan Paul, and said to themselves, what if we married the two? Not Logan Paul and KSI, although that would make some serious noise, but them and, and the sports drink industry, of course. So the whole prime brand and idea was conceived and basically presented in such a way that made people think that this beverage was the idea, the, the baby of these two very popular YouTubers. And the way that they did it is brilliant. A little shady, but brilliant. So Gatorade became an international sensation partly because of clever partnerships with names like Michael Jordan. But modern celebrity isn't somebody who is just a genius in their field, but somebody who social media as well. In many ways, today's social media giants shape the minds of younger generations in a far more powerful way than just somebody who knows how to shoot hoops. No offense to Michael Jordan, of course. That guy is very intense, if I'm to believe that documentary that he created. I, I took offense to that. 
The thing is about us YouTubers, if I can just quickly lump myself in with some of the most influential people of my generation, is that even if we don't have as much widespread celebrity status as somebody like Michael Jordan, we still have one huge advantage, and that is a true connection with our audience. The vloggers in particular invite viewers into their homes and their lives in an intimate way. They're introducing them to friends and family, they're getting involved with fans directly by responding to comments and liking stuff. And this connection is, of course, super ripe for manipulation and distortion. If you're watching a creator like Emma Chamberlain in her bedroom, waking up with her in the morning or driving to work with her or something, you can see how easy it is for people to feel like these creators are their friends, right? It's totally understandable. And what would you do if your best, closest friend starts a business? You support them, right? Of course. You want to make sure that they succeed. And in a lot of situations, this is just lovely. Creators launch their own products like Simone's calendar thing or Airax hot sauce. But in a lot of cases, this sort of product launch can feel more exploitative. Now, Congo Brands understood this relationship very well and they took this special YouTuber viewer bond and turned it for a profit. Everything about the KSI Logan partnership was just so perfectly planned. You have two YouTube stars with tens of millions of followers between them. Like, 39 million followers or something. You have one in America and you have one in the UK, which is already spanning the Atlantic. They're both boxers, so Prime always had this sort of edge for marketing and drama and extremeness, you know? And most importantly, they had this epic rivalry. From beating each other to a pulp in the boxing ring to becoming this like unexpected business partner story, it's such a powerful, heartwarming, and totally bullshit story. They literally admit that it was all a show, which is, of course, the reality, but like, to say it? Ah. Oh. However, the marketing doesn't just stop there, right? The Prime team with Logan Paul and KSI knows how to go viral. Their videos are seen tens of millions of times, and this is also combined with more traditional style partnerships with the likes of UFC and NASCAR to further amplify Prime's legitimacy and extreme lifestyle branding, I guess. But probably one of the things that is so interesting about Prime is this hype, right? It's kind of hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that the, there's a frenzy of people, like desperate mobs crowding outside of grocery stores at the crack of dawn, running and pushing each other out of the way to buy this drink. They're going kind of crazy and they sell out instantly. And we've come across tales of people driving literally like hundreds of miles to buy these drinks or spending up to $1,500 for a 12 pack. Now you'd think Prime would have been like, oh my God, you know, we got a supply and demand issue. Holy crap, let's just like make more sugary water beverage. But that's the thing, even as of the writing of this script, on their website right now, it shows that everything's pretty well sold out. And that's because this supposed supply crisis may be just as contrived as the rest of this brand. The thing about us humans is that we tend to ascribe more value to products that we perceive as scarce. So a company may just deliberately make their product hard to get in order to generate hype and rack up prices. Now they of course have denied that they're doing this, but I'm not the only one having doubts here. I feel like they've held back the product deliberately. So you think this is deliberate? I'm absolutely certain it's deliberate. All right, so you know what? Listen, the advertising tactics are a little sus, but you know, maybe that's just creative. Maybe they're just doing something different in order to build a brand in our modern society. Who can fault them for that, right? But here's the thing. It doesn't matter how good your marketing is if your product sucks, right? So how do they present Prime in the fitness drink world? One of Prime's biggest claims over other products is that they have a fraction of the sugar content of classic brands. They also claim to have over twice the number of electrolytes as Gatorade. And as we know, electrolytes are just one of those things where like the more you have, the better. It's like cars, hair, and money, and above ground pools. The more you have, the better. I think that holds water, honestly. But here's the thing. Prime's health claims don't actually make any 
sense. I mean, the sugar thing, maybe, because there is just literally less sugar in there, but they do replace that sugar with sucralose, which has its own set of problems. But hey, listen, if your main goal here is to drink an actual hydration drink that's supposed to help you, you know, do things athletically, you also are shit out of luck because prime isn't it. If you have watched our Gatorade video, remember that the whole point of a sports drink is to essentially replace the things that you're sweating out. Turns out that we lose a lot of electrolytes when we sweat profusely. These electrolytes are basically just a class of minerals that helps with a host of important bodily functions, notably hydration. The main one that we lose while sweating is sodium. Because of this, companies that actually care about replenishing your electrolytes during a workout tend to include predominantly sodium in their drinks. Turns out though, that sodium kind of tastes like salt, which isn't exactly a flavor that you want for your fruit punch beverage. And this is why you see obscene amounts of sugar in sports drinks to kind of make them more palatable, right? But here's the thing, Prime is supposedly a sports drink, but they have barely any sodium in their drinks at all. You know, like that thing that sports drinks are supposed to have in them in order to function properly. Instead, what they do is ramp up the potassium content so that they can proudly claim to have double the electrolytes without risking the flavor. Meanwhile, Gatorade is over there boasting literally 20 times the amount of sodium as Prime. But that's off the point, really, because they know that we don't really know anything about electrolytes other than electrolytes are good, right? The reality is the majority of us shouldn't have to worry about these minerals at all because if you're just maintaining a healthy-ish diet, you're getting all the sodium you need. And if you're a really serious athlete that wants to perform at your best, you're probably not gonna be drinking Prime. As of the making of this video, they are announcing yet another new lineup. This time it's going to be energy drinks. Now we don't have time to get into that whole thing, but it seems like it's gonna be pretty much the same story as their sports drinks. Probably a lot of funky, crazy flavors, not a lot of stock, and big, bold promises about how it's so much better than the competitors. And up to this point, maybe you're thinking, Levi, this doesn't really matter. People wanna drink sugary beverages and they want to be associated with a person that they really like on YouTube. What's the problem, right? And this is the problem. We all know that companies twist truths a bit here and there to top up sales, but there's something different about the Prime story. We haven't witnessed this kind of instantaneous, massive international success from a YouTube brand before. I wouldn't go as far as to say that Prime is really like threatening Gatorade stranglehold on the industry, although, KSI and Logan Paul would probably disagree and make a whole video about it. But at the very least, they've shaken things up to such a degree that you can bet that other companies are taking note and preparing a response. As one example, food theory raises a very valid concern. When fakers like Prime are allowed to masquerade as a sports drink without the basic elements of a sports drink, that puts other companies in an awkward position. It's fully possible that to compete on a taste level, vying brands will pull similar stunts to the point where the entire category is meaningless. On a broader level, prime proof to the world just how lucrative this whole business strategy is. I wouldn't be shocked if we don't see more bigwigs paying off influencers to announce their own personal brands in the near future, or lowering sodium levels and changing ingredients lists to appeal more broadly. Now there is a chance that, you know, companies like Gatorade and Powerade go out and do like a really above board effort to like, you know, do the right thing and, and present their information properly and not just go after money. But I have a feeling that the money grabbers are gonna grab. I don't know, we never test things on this channel. We mostly just talk about them, but let's just see here. Wow, that's um, whew, that's pretty intense. I <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but it was not quite that. Holy, oh my God. You know like Tang, like old school Tang or like blue raspberry Slurpee or something? That's kind of what this tastes like. Wow, whew, that's intense. God, I gotta get something else in my mouth here. That's what she said. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> oh my God. And hey, if you love this video and you wanna see more content from this channel, uh, make sure you're subscribed and we'll see you every single Wednesday. And if you wanna support what we do even more, check us out over on Patreon.
Thanks so much.